Hello and welcome back to Bits and Bobs and today we're going coin and antique shopping in Hungerford. We've travelled to Hungerford and now we're in the lovely town famous for antique shops. And a bit more up our alley there's also some coin shops here in Hungerford. We're going to film all the coins and antiques we see and give you a view around the lovely shops and then we're going to go through one by one and show you all the items we bought and lovely lovely coins including some silver so make sure to stay around. I'm up first and I'm the only one who bought antiques. I will show you the antiques and then we can get on with the coins. So I bought some antique newspapers for £5 in total. So one from 1863 and one from 1928. The one from 1928 is all about the Flying Scotsman on its longest journey uh, so far. And the other one is just about the goings on in the Victorian times. So you've just looked at my antiques. Now I'm going to show you the coins that I bought. So, as you can see, I bought a 1921 flooring for £2, although the price of the silver within the coin is £4.06. Therefore, this coin was actually below the value of silver, so a good bargain in my eyes. So next up, I bought an 1829 shilling for £8. The mintage of this coin, which is quite low, is 879,120. The low mintage and the high quality of this coin puts this coin at around £40 sterling, which is a lot more than I paid. So, the last and my most favourite coin is the Queen Anne threepence of 1706. The quality is near fine slash fine, and I paid £40 for it. As you can see with the coin, you can actually see the quality very well, because you can see the lips of Queen Anne and every word is visible. On the actual card it says there are some thin scratches, but overall it is a lovely coin and I got an amazing deal. Now onto the coins that I bought today on our day out. The first coin is a 1940 florin. I paid £2 for it which is less than the silver value in the coin. This is a great deal. The second coin is a 1899 shilling. I bought this for £5. It features a veiled head Victoria on the obverse and on the reverse a intricate design. I really like this coin. This last coin is an 1826 George IV shilling. This is my first George IV coin and the quality on the coin is extremely good. It is also almost 200 years old and made of sterling silver. So, I spent £150 on coins today. As you can imagine, that's a lot of coins. And so, we're going to go ahead back to the studio and I'll film all these coins to show you what lovely rarities I got. So let's get through them. First up is this. It's a 1973 pence. This used to be in a proof set as it didn't circulate, so it has a lower mintage because it was proof. This is a proof three lines of England round one pound coin. And it's from 1997. Raphael McClue's portrait of the Queen there in lovely proof. And it is in this square slab. The next kind I bought was a letter I alphabet 10p. And here it is here. I also got a letter X 10p. And a letter E 10p. Now all of these Alphabet 10Ps are very very rare and hard to find in circulation, so you're better off just to buy them in my opinion, as they're not that expensive with correlating with their rarity. Another circulating coin that I bought was this. This is the Table Tennis Olympic 50p, of course from 2011, ready for the Olympics the next year. And again it's a rare coin in circulation, 
and I got a good deal on this one. The next coin I bought was this, and this is the Great Fire of London £2 coin. This is one of the last £2 coins to be released into circulation, and it is in fact one of the rarest as well, with also a lovely design here by Aaron West. This next coin I got out of the thing so you can see the date it is, 1757, or at least to the best of my ability that's the date I can make out. It does feature George II, who was of course reigning in 1757, which makes it more likely to be 1757. Another old copper coin I bought was this. This is an 1895 half penny, and you can see the date at the bottom, 1895. This was one I needed for my date run, although it is in pretty terrible condition. A lot of these coins had a sort of bulk discount, so I didn't say the prices as there's no individual price, but they all came to a sort of collective price, getting a better value and buying each coin individually one at a time. And now onto some old silver coins. First up is this. This, as you can see, is a 1936 florin, but the price is the cool thing. I paid only £2 for this coin, when the silver in the coin is worth £4.06 with current prices, so that's a great deal buying silver below the actual value of silver. The next silver coin I got was again a good deal for the silver, another florin, and this one for only £4, but this coin is in exceptional condition, and I would value it at maybe perhaps £15, and you can comment down below what you think, because this has got lots of original mint luster and barely any signs of wear at all on the coin. And it is a new one for my date run, so that's always good as well. This lovely gothic florin I picked up, and as you can see, the date is in Roman numerals. So I believe it's obviously going to be 18. There's an L with three X's, so that's 50 plus 30, which is 80. So 1885, 6, 7. 1887, which means this is a rare year of gothic florin, as that was the last year they were produced. And the next coin up is also a Victoria one. As you can see here, if I show you the label, there's a Victoria 1880 shilling featuring the young head. So here is the young head, and as you can see, it's quite nice condition, it's quite worn, but it's also a nice colour, with not much dirt on the coin. And on the reverse of the coin we see here, the usual design by Jean-Baptiste Merlin, and the date 1880 is quite clear at the bottom. The next coin I bought is also a young head shilling, as you can see here, this one is from 1884, and all these ones are new for my date run. This one was a bit more costly, as it is a bit rarer, and in a bit better condition. £8, and here we see an 1884 one shilling. Very nice, and also again, 95 silver. More shillings and more 95 silver. Next up is this, an Edward VII shilling from 1908. And as you can see, I paid nine pounds. It is in very nice condition on the obverse and as well as the reverse. So you can see not much wear and not much dirt on the coin. So nine pounds is a good and fair price for such a lovely coin. Another very good coin. This is my favorite coin I picked up today. is the 1909 Florin. So as you can see, it is the standing Britannia Florin. And if I do say so myself, it is a lovely example of one with the legend and portrait of Britannia being in very nice condition, and the date is visible, which is always a big concern with these coins. As you can see there, 1909. And the portrait of Edward VII is also in very nice condition here, as we see, with the legend fully intact. Here we see the Royal Academy of Arts £5 coin. This is one of the rarer and less known £5 coins, but I got a great deal, only £12, which is less than they released the new ones for, even though this one is an older and rarer variant of the £5 coin through its history. So a very good deal there. The coin will zoom out to have a look at this. Elizabeth I commemorative crown or five pound coin. Let's open the bank pack up and show you the coin. And here it is, a beautiful design if I do say so. It features Elizabeth I on the reverse and of course Elizabeth II on the obverse. Meaning this is the only coin to feature both Queen Elizabeths on each side. Very cool. And again, it's one of the rarer five pound coins you see less often in the shops and online. And so there we go. Some of the coins I was able to price individually for you. A lot of them were sort of bulk and didn't really have a price on, I just got them part of the deal and stuff that I ordered. But as I say, my daily spending was about £150, although that does include a meal deal from Co-op. Thank you for watching this video on Bits and Bobs. Please do comment down below your favourite coin of this video. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time on Bits and Bobs.